Now that we know that that huge spectrum of wavelengths is out there, why don't we see all the rest with our eyes? The answer to that question lies 150 million kilometers away. It's the sun. Our star emits light, electromagnetic radiation, across the whole spectrum. But when this sunlight passes through Earth's atmosphere, shorter and longer wavelengths like gamma rays and most ultraviolet, that's all filtered out. And much of the infrared is absorbed as heat. So what punches through all the way to the surface where we're hanging out is a pretty narrow window of light, wavelengths between about 400 and 700 nanometers. Of all the energy that gets released from the sun, only this tiny sliver reaches us in abundance. And so that's what evolution seized on. Our ancestors' eyes evolved to pick up on what was available. This little band of light provided enough data to distinguish edges and shapes and motion and color. Plants reflect the particular wavelengths we see as green. Ripe fruit often reflects another set of wavelengths we see as red or yellow. Blood looks red, fire looks orange, and presumably our ancestors who could detect these sorts of distinctions had a better shot at survival. Color perception had nothing to do with aesthetic pleasures, which we'll get into in the next episode, at least not originally. It was about spotting what mattered. Is that fruit ripe? Is that animal bleeding? Is that flash of color over there a flower or a threat? Over tens of millions of years, animal brains became color detectives. It's not that we wanted to marvel at rainbows, it's that it was extraordinarily useful to decode a layer of information bouncing off objects in the world. We extract meaning from the quality of the reflected light. I suspect that berry is full of sugar and calories because it's reflecting a wavelength that I see as red. That yellowing leaf tells me about decay. The flush in that guy's cheek reveals anger. In this way, we and other animals learned to read the mood and state 